because we are right in the middle of the winter i want to talk about some of the most loud bold daring animalic long-lasting fragrances that i have in my collection hi everyone i'm joel lima from scented moments channel where i help you to discover the fantastic world of perfumery so in this video i want to talk about 14 amazing loud bold animalic long-lasting fragrances from my collection in a no specific order and of course the majority of that i mean 99 of these fragrances that i will feature they are all niche i just have one exception which is a designer from an exclusive line um so with that being said i will not mention any of these in a specific order so the first fragrance that i want to talk about it's from the house of uh, papillon artisan perfumes and it is anubis this fragrance is loud it's daring it has an animalic quality the most uh the main note of this fragrance is suede but the suede here it's so intense and dark and thick with um heavy incense with spices and again this has some animalic qualities in here so th this fragrance is out of this world i absolutely love this fragrance this also has like a dustiness in in it um it's a dark mysterious but very bold and loud at the same time i mean it's very intriguing it's a very intriguing fragrance but uh it's intoxicating at the same time. I absolutely love it. I love this fragrance. Love at first sniff. I mean, uh, Papillon also has an animalic fragrance, which is also very loud uh, and very indolic. It's uh, Salome. I don't have, I don't have it yet. But uh, this one, this one or Salome would work. But uh, but yes, for this video uh, and for now, I will mention Anubis, which I absolutely love and actually was very well featured on my winter list of this year next fragrance is from the house of ramon monegal from the don't touch my wood collection i absolutely love uh this brand and this line i consider this line to be the best wood line in the niche side of things i'm not counting with uh indie or artisan brands um but uh, yes in a niche world this is the best wood line that you will that you will smell and uh, the specific fragrance that I have here is Ocean Wood. Beautiful bottle presentation. They all come in this bottle presentation. Ocean Wood for me is the most daring fragrance from this collection. I have Soul of Wood, which I absolutely love, but it's a more chocolatey, resinous, thick wood. Uh, then you have Elambra Wood, which is a rose wood fragrance for me, the best in that genre. But it's not funky nor animalic, so it, it has that slightly chocolatey resinous wood, but with this beautiful carnal, a bit chammy rose. I mean, it's to die for. Um, then you have uh, Oud on Fire, which is a very smoky wood. Um, but I, this one, Ocean Wood, is the most daring still, because this has like a, an, a salty aquatic nature with oud the and the oud in this entire collection has a natural feel into it um and this one is no exception so you have this natural smelling oud with this salty aquatic accords which is very weird and in the and the end result i mean and you can see i mean the beautiful world presentation again but um the end result is like a old man's breath type of smell <laughs> with wood it's yeah it's very weird um and doesn't seem pleasant and th this was not love at first sniff at all I, I needed really to learn to appreciate this fragrance and i now i absolutely love the artistic side of this fragrance and when i want to feel more avant-garde let's say i will wear this one because it's that good i mean it's a high quality fragrance nonetheless uh, but yes, it has that feel that I already said, so that uh, old man's breath. So it's it's not the, maybe not the most pleasant at uh, first, but then if you let it settle, the oud will 
uh, will start to shine and then you have that uh, warm, resinous, a bit balsamic wood that it's to die for. Br brilliant fragrance here. It's huge. It's, it's, it's loud. You need to go easy on the trigger with this one, at least on my skin. It's, it's quite loud, um, but still brilliant fragrance. Again, Ocean Wood by Ramon Monegal. The next fragrance it's from the house of Frederick Mal, and it is Promise. Now it's not the night because I feel that that fragrance is a bit overpriced, although it's very daring and it's beautiful. It's I mean it's it's a beautiful wood, one of the best woods out there definitely, but it's overpriced. Um, and Promise is doesn't have wood, but uh, it's it's equally daring I would say. So this has probably the best green apple accord that I smelled um, because it's 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 realistic it's really green apple um, and it adds some slightly sweet play in a playful uh, nuance to this fragrance because then you have this huge Nagar Martha with Cipriol I mean this is a dark woodsy, foresty, incense woodsy fragrance. Um, you have this slightly sweetness from the and playfulness from the green apple, which is quite present and uh, it adds some sort of uh, appeal because then it's just darkness and uh, woods and dryness and and it's it's huge. This fragrance is huge. Uh, it's loud, bold, daring. Um, not for everyone. It's and it's a very rich fragrance. Very unique concoction here. I, I absolutely love this fragrance. Actually, it was love at first sniff. Wasn't featured on my winter list of this year, but was featured on my winter list of last year, 2021. Uh, so. I know we are 2023, but well, when we are uploading our winter list is 2022, 2023. So in 2021, when I recorded my video, my winter list for that season, I featured this one, Promise, and it was very well featured in that video, I have to say. Um, but still, absolutely love this. Very intense and full, rich, unique, which still has an appeal touch because again of the green apple um and so it's it's very unique i think it's a very well blended fragrance it, it combines daring and uniqueness and boldness daringness if that's even a word with some appeal uh and some uh, playfulness um so yeah absolutely love this promise frederick mal but this is still a very bold and loud Fragrance. The next fragrance, it's from the house of Amouage and it is Gold Man. This one right here. Gold Man, this was the first fragrance released by Amouage in the 80s um, in a different bottle presentation. And even it, it wasn't Gold Man, it wasn't the initial name of this fragrance, which now uh, I can't remember. But still, this one is. Whew, it's loud and it's uh, it's not for everyone. It's animalic, so you have civet in here, jasmine. So this is very indolic, powdery, animalic fragrance. This is not for everyone, but this is regal. This is a, a bold statement of a fragrance. It's really one of the most underrated fragrances from Amouage. Um, and I understand because, again, this is not for everyone. Uh, and uh, it's not, it's a bit off trend, let's say, because you don't have any sort of sweetness in here. Uh, even I don't detect much resins uh, or sweet resins. This is really like, it might have a bit of an incense kick, but it's mostly this powdery. And Dolic Jasmine with Civet. I mean, pff, wow. And it's it's a big, it's a full perfume. Great fragrance right here from the house of Amouage Gold Man. Next fragrance is from the house of Maison Francis Courtin. Sadly discontinued, but I needed to feature this fragrance because 
I absolutely love it and it's really one of the best works from Francis Courchamp. It is absolute pour le soir. This fragrance is really groundbreaking for me, um, especially when it was released. Uh, this is very unique. So this is an amber, a full amber, very gooey, resinous amber, but with animalic qualities. And it's a bit pissy even. I don't know if this has jasmine, I don't recall, but this has some, some sort of a pissiness in here with um, castorium. And so this is very furry and animalic and aggressive with a with a labdanum, like a slightly sweet, gooey labdanum to just around the animalic qualities. This fragrance is beautiful. It's very sexy in my opinion, but again, not for everyone. Um, but for me, this is a very rich, intense and full fragrance. Great performance and uh, sadly discontinued. I understand because again, this is, this is not for everyone. And I, I'm sure that this was not being sold that well. Uh, so that's why they discontinued it. But still, if you can find uh, a bottle or a sample, just go and try. If you don't want to spend the buck on this fragrance, go with Dark Side by Francesca Bianchi, which has an inspiration in this fragrance. And you can see a bit of a similarity in there. But this one is more thick and dense in the labdanum. And I consider even the dark side a bit more daring, even I would say. Um, not as full or not as thick, but the animalic qualities in there are a bit amped up. But I feel that this one is a bit more balanced and the performance is better, at least on my skin. That's why I'm featuring Absolute Pour Le Soir and not Dark Side. But Dark Side is also, it's also daring. It's also a bold statement of a perfume. The performance isn't as great, but um, but still, it's quite good and it's a great replacement to Absolute Pour Le Soir. Uh, but yes, Absolute Pour Le Soir for me, um, it works a bit better on my skin, I would say. That's why I'm featuring it, but, uh, but I love both. I have both, love both, so uh, there's that. From Maison Francis Courchamp, this beautiful resinous amber and emalic fragrance. Absolute pour le soir. Next fragrance, this is a recent acquisition of mine from House of Profumum Roma, Fumilus. Wow, just look at the color. <laughs> this is a huge perfume. This is one of the most daring fragrance that I have in my collection. It's, I, th I would say this, if I would rank this, this would be top five. It's that daring and I have quite a few fragrances here um but this one is just out of this world uh, but it's really good it's really good wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so this is smoke 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 this is it seems like if, when i'm smelling this i feel that my face is burned <laughs> or at least it's full of smoke um, because this basically is all about smoked birch tar with vetiver. Um, some people say that this has also whiskey, but I don't get any whiskey in here. This for me is dry, woodsy, smoky, campfire-esque uh, with vetiver. Uh, this, is, this smells literally like you are burning woods at the end of the day in the middle of the forest simple as that and it's very intense and loud and then and the dry down it's a beautiful vetiver <laughs> um, I absolutely love this one uh, yes n this is not for everyday wear well any of these fragrances are to be honest but this one specifically it's very rich and very the smokiness of this fragrance will just overwhelm everything <laughs> around you but it's beautiful absolutely love this one a very dark and opulent fragrance right here if you love smoky fragrances i mean give this one a try fumidus by profumo broma next fragrance is from house of guerlain from the les absolute d'orient collection i think it's absolute d'orient collection 
and this one is Cuir Intense. Wow, this fragrance is big. I think th this fragrance is the one that it's the most daring of this line. Now, Guerlain and this fragrance specifically was not the one that I was mentioning at the beginning of the video. Uh, I mean, we can debate if Guerlain is designer or niche, but it, it's not the fragrance that I was talking about being a designer, but in the exclusive line. But nonetheless, I mean, Queer Entance, this, this fragrance, it's a full perfume. So this is leather, like the name implies. It's a full, terry, brown leather, raw leather with and fruitiness it has like a apricot in here and it has like a it has a it's kind of reminiscence of ensemble thick it has a bit of ensemble thick in here imagine like uh, the animalic qualities of the ambergris like a bit of and a bit of incense with a terry animalic raw leather with apricot it's what this fragrance smells like for me and this this was uh back when this was released it was my favorite leather back then not today but still still is one of my favorites i really love this one and this was rumored to be discontinued or assumed to be discontinued but is not fortunately um but it, it, it's it's a loud bold fragrance and huge performance i mean if you love leather check this one out it's queer intense by Guerlain. next fragrance from the house of baruti perverso now this is probably in terms of smell it's the least daring of the fragrances that i already featured and that i will still feature um because th this is a a full loud gourmand fragrance this has gourmand qualities so this is basically you have coffee roasted nuts you have a bit of an ima an, a, a slightly animalic quality definitely quite smoky but it's again it's like the roasted nuts with a coffee tonka bean a bit of rum um a mild animalic quality like uh, castorium but it's mild this is imagine like a more daring um daring bold loud um version of by the fireplace by the fireplace it's sweeter cozier warm this one is like the avant-garde cousin or brother of by the fireplace yes it's it's quite intense and loud this is an extrait de parfum and uh, choose praise everyone will smell you you will fill two rooms Th this this fragrance is uh, one of the best performers that i have in my collection this this is really loud but it, but it's pleasant uh, because again of the gourmand qualities and the tonka beans the again roasted nuts coffee rum but uh, the, the the reason why this fragrance is being featured here is because of its huge performance i mean it's it can be overwhelming um and again everyone will smell you that's why this is being featured here but i absolutely love this fragrance again couple sprays is enough still has a uniqueness i mean you i can see the slightly resemblance of by the fireplace but this still has its own dna and its uh, own character uh, because of the animal qualities because um the it's it's not chestnut uh it's not roasted chestnut it's uh, more roasted nuts and it's it's not as sweet uh, or mainstream sweet as in uh, by the fireplace is. So this, in the end, it's still a fragrance in its own. Baruti is an indie brand located in the Netherlands. So definitely a higher quality fragrance, more unique, more daring, more bold. Um, absolutely love this. But again, just for reference sake, if you love by the fireplace, chances are that you might appreciate this one. Puriversu by Baruti. 
Next fragrance from the house of Rania J. And Rania J has some quite daring fragrances. I absolutely love this house. It's one of my all time favorite fragrance houses. And this one is Tia Banero. It's probably the most daring tobacco fragrance that I ever tried. So this is tobacco, like tobacco leaves, damp, wet tobacco leaves with funk. It, it's very funky, it has oud, and it has also animalic qualities in here. Uh, this, this fragrance is, it's, it's again, very funky, and you need to prepare for the funk <laughs> of this fragrance. Um, again, animalic, funky, damp, wet tobacco, I mean, spicy. This is quite unique, thick, rich, complex, like all Hanyo J fragrances are, uh, with the exception of one or two, thinking of Love 144, for example, which is one of the best lavender fragrances, like it's a realistic lavender fragrance. But yeah, this one is completely the opposite. Um, beautiful scent. If you love tobacco and if you are searching for a daring tobacco scent, check no more. Tia Banero by Rania J. Next fragrance from the house of Sergio from the Oud Stars collection, Alcat. Absolutely love this fragrance. This was love at first sniff. This is one of the most indolic fragrances that I, uh, indolic jasmine fragrances that I smelled with Oud. Now the Oud, it's not the Oud that it's funky. It's really the jasmine. The jasmine in here, it's huge. It's massive. But the best part is that this fragrance, the jasmine used in here, kind of reminds me of Alien by Mugler. Um, so that's that's quite funny. Um, but uh, kind of because of the resemblance, at least in my mind, um, of the jasmine used in here. But this is a huge Indolic jasmine, like funky, it has like a pissiness in here um, with this sweet resinous oud. It's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. It's it's a simple fragrance, but it's intoxicating. It's I just want to smell this over and over. Um, a couple of years ago, or last year, I think I was. It was a couple of years ago when I tr when I bought this fragrance. I mean this. This fragrance was everything <laughs> that I was using. I mean, so intoxicating, so addicting, and daring, and bold, and rich. Um, performance, amazing. And I think this is one of the most underrated. I mean, this has a cult follow uh, among the Sergeoff lovers, let's say. But uh, I feel that this is still quite underrated in the surge of world. Uh, but I understand because th this is not for everyone again. And this, this is loud. This is, again, has the indolic pissiness. Um, so definitely not for everyone, but I absolutely love this. It's, for me, it's a unique concoction. Jasmine with Oud, Alcat by Serge of. It's one of the best from this line, definitely. And the next fragrance, it's another oud, and this is the last oud fragrance that I will mention. This is an oud rose uh, fragrance from the house of Diptyque Oud Palau. I absolutely love this. Uh, I, I love Diptyque, love this bottle presentation. This is another parfum. Um, oud Palau is, wow, well, it, it's big. Uh, at least on my skin is, it, I think this is the most daring fragrance from this house. It's the most bold and out there uh, fragrance from this house. Because usually the teak, they tend to be uh, more soft, elegant. Some are sweeter, cozy. Um, some, and some fragrances have a, that fine French perfume feel. Uh, this one is completely the opposite. So this is Oud Rose Tobacco. And this is funky. This is funky and animalic Oud Rose that then turns into Oud Tobacco. It's beautiful. I love how this fragrance develops on my skin because it's, it's again full, it's rich, it's, it's intense, it's out there. 
but I love the transition. Like you get the oud rose that then you get this tobacco leaves. The rose starts to fade away and then the tobacco leaves start to shine more. It's beautiful. Often compared with Oud is Paham by Christian Dior from the private collection of uh, Christian Dior. Um, but um, a lot of people say that uh, Oud is Paham is completely watered down and it's a shadow of its previous self. Um, so just go with this one. It's for a fraction of the price. It, this is currently, I think it's 135 euros for a brand new 75 ml. And this is the bigger size uh, that you will get. Um, and you have here one of the best. This is for me my second favorite oud rose concoction. So you have Alhambra oud from Ramon Monegal, and then you have this one, oud palau. And this is the reason why I feel that this is more daring than Alhambra oud because Alhambra oud again it doesn't have funkiness or animalic qualities like this one does. This one has this. This is beautiful. It's beautiful and it's daringness. Absolutely love this one. One of the best Oud Rose fragrances out there. Oud Palau by Diptyque. Next fragrance from the house of Etalie Porte Orange. Rien Intense Incense. This fragrance is huge, huge. And it's cold. It's a dark, cold fragrance so you have lots of incense like a churchy incense again dark cold dry with jasmine uh aldehydes and some again there is some castorium in here although i think castorium is not featured as a note uh, in here, but I get really like a leathery and emalic quality. <sighs> this is fantastic, but again, not for everyone, not for daily wear, definitely not. I mean, just <laughs> the bottle. This beautiful bottle presentation will really suggest that this is not for the daily basis. I mean, you can for sure wear this on a daily basis, but well, I doubt that. Um, uh, there's a lot of people that will do that. Uh, so again, this is a full-on indolic, incense, cold, dark, dry fragrance. Amazing. Absolutely love this one. And when, when you're talking about daring and loud fragrances, I mean, you really need to talk about this one. And if you're searching for a fragrance with those qualities, check this one out. This one will not break your bank. I mean, usually Talib Torange, uh, fragrances aren't that expensive and they are from the most part very artistic and this one is definitely one of them again Rion intense incense talking about loud and animalic the next fragrance it's from the house of Sarah Baker and it is jungle Jezebel created by Miguel Mach uh, which is a Portuguese perfumer, and I'm very proud to have this bottle. I already did a review of this one long time ago, like when this one was first released, like four years ago or so. Um, this is a limited edition bottle. Nowadays, it comes in a different bottle presentation, but I will guess that the, the smell is the same. The fragrance inside is the same. This one is... <sighs> It's big, it's rich, it's thick. So this has lots of tuberose and it has like a banana chewing gum with civet. What a concoction. Oh. <laughs> yeah, th this is that daring. But I love this. This is, this is really good. I mean, th again, civet, tuberose with this banana chewing gum. So this is very playful and daring at the same time. It has this sweetness. It has also like a amber quality with civet. <laughs> this is brilliant. Uh, it's a really unique. It's a very unique fragrance, not for everyone. 
but I'm very proud to have this, not only this beautiful bottle, but also the scent. This fragrance is very, I never smelled anything like this before. Uh, this is one of my most daring fragrances that I have in my collection. And this reminds me of the beginning of my uh, fragrance journey because um, I added this fragrance to my collection uh, right, back in 2018, 2019, maybe. So uh, I, I was in my early stage, especially in YouTube. I started collecting in 2016, collecting. Am I a fragrance collector or not? Well, that's another topic, but I started to dive into this fragrance community, fragrance world thing, like in 2016. Started my YouTube in 2018 and maybe a year later, actually it was uh, Miguel who Miguel Mach who was very very generous to give me this uh, this bottle because even back in back in the day I absolutely loved this one like at first sniff and then he just gave me it because I really did love it I already did a review of this one um, and yeah kind of reminds me of those days and I'm still in love with this fragrance it's it's that good but again you need to sample this one because it's really because it has really that playfulness and 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 animalic qualities and both are just in your face um but it's great it's a very artistic fragrance and uh, i love it because of that jungle jezebel by sarah baker perfumes and last but definitely not least this is the fragrance that i was mentioned when i said that I had a designer, but from the exclusive line from the house of Chanel, Le Lyon. Yes, Le Lyon for me, it's, it's loud, it's bold, it has an animalic quality. I know that this doesn't have any animalic note listed, but for some reason I really get like a furry, musky quality, but what it's really prominent is the labdanum here the labdanum is king um it's the most prominent note in here it's a very raw dense thick labdanum uh with some incense with patchouli and the patchouli in here it's kind of reminiscent of Coromandel, also from uh, chanel of course and also you have a vanilla touch this is fantastic. I mean, Lil Yon really suits the name. And you can see how much I already wore this. I've been wearing this one a lot. And uh, actually, this was alongside uh, Wyoming from Serge Off. Lil Yon was one of my most worn fragrances in December. Absolutely love this one. This is a masterpiece. One of the best creations from Chanel. And definitely one of the best creations of Olivier Poche, which is a note behind this beauty right here. And actually, this was the first fragrance, the first less exclusive for me. So, um, yeah, I really do love this one. And it's daring, it's bold, it's loud. It's probably the most loud fragrance from the less exclusive. So I really advise you to check this one out. This, and this is, at the same time, very real. And this is a statement, not only just a bold statement, it's, it's a statement. You're here uh, and you are shining and everyone will notice you. It's, it's Lilion from Chanel. Absolutely love it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me in the comments down below what are some of your most daring, powerful, animalic fragrances in your collection and what fragrances would you uh, advise me to check out in this category? I would love to hear your suggestions uh, and see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Ciao.